Hey there, we're, we're continuing chapter tw uh, 11 here with uh, study of volume. We've done surface area of different uh, three-dimensional shapes. We're going to do volume now. 11.4 11, uh, 11 focuses on volume of prisms and cylinders. So the goal that we've set for, for this lesson is um, to find the volume of a prism and the volume of a cylinder. Two different things. So, first of all, what is volume? Well... Um, <clears throat> volume simply is not, is how loud something is. Not not talking about that kind of volume. We're talking about the volume of a of a three dimensional object. So it's um, the space. It's a measure of the space inside of a three dimensional object. All right. And I'm just going to start you off with this with this unique um, theorem. It's theorem 11.5, and this will sometimes come into 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 shape here. Um, no pun intended there. But if two space figures have the same height and the same cross-sectional area, I mean, if you cut it straight across horizontally, we'll say for a cross-section, if it's the same area um, in both of those figures, at every level then they have the same volume. <clears throat> and this is the way to show it with this picture here. Uh, both sticks, stacks of paper actually have the same um, number of sheets, so they have the same volume. Because they would have the same cross-sectional area anywhere. Because all the papers are the same length. Uh, and they certainly have the same height. So that's an interesting thing. That's called Cavalieri's Principle. So another famous mathematician. You come up with a theorem like that, and you'll have one named after you. Um, continuing on, though, we're going to start go to theorem 11.6, and this is just the volume of a prism. This is one that you've learned a long time ago. Um, this is the one that most people learn throughout their life. We're going to add some more to this, uh, some more shapes. We're going to start off with the volume of a prism. The volume of a prism is the product of the area of the base and the height. So it's B times height. Or if you're looking at a prism, you could say length times width times height. So the area of the base would be length times width. That's how you get the area of the base, and you multiply it by the height. All right. So let's just do that in a couple of shapes here. First one, again, what is the volume of the rectangular prism? Well, the area of the base would be 5 times 3, so length times width. Um, sorry, we're not doing area, we're doing volume. So the area of the base is 5 times 3, and you multiply that by the height. 5 times 3 is 15, times 4 would get you to 60. Now, one thing about volume that you may have remembered, it's a three-dimensional object. So the label would be cubed, 60 feet cubed. Next one, example 2, suppose that the prism above is turned so that it looks like the following. So we just turned it. Um, does the volume change? Why or why not? Well, it shouldn't change. Let's check it out. Let's do the, the volume. Area of the base would be 4 times 5, that's 20, times 3 would then get you 60 feet squared. Sorry, 60 feet cubed. It is still the same shape, it'll still have the same volume in it, no matter how it's uh, orientated. What's the volume of the triangular prism to the right? This one's tricky, because it's not in a great... Is that in a great place right now because we don't, we can't do area of the base times the height. If we're going to look at the base as 6 times 5, well, we're mistaken. Remember, bases are the ones that are parallel. So the bases would be right here. And again, you could do it that way, but you'd have to divide it by 2. But here's the area of the base. All right, that is the base. It's the parallel sides. So the volume would be equal to the area of the base times the height. And the area of the base for this one would be 1 half 6 times 10. And then you multiply that by the height, which is 5. Yep, it would be the height. 5 would be the height if you're looking at it that way. All right, 1 half of 6 times 10 would be... 6 times 10 is 60. Whoops. Half of that would be 30. Times 5, I think, would be 150 meters cubed again. If you looked at the other... If you looked at the 6 times 5 being the base... Um, that would be 30 multiplied by the height would be 300. But since it's a triangular prism, then you'd have to divide it by 2. And you get 150 that way, too. 
Um, one more example here. Again, looking at this one, what is the volume of the triangular prism at the right? Well, again, you gotta ha you're gonna have to look at it a couple different ways. You're gonna have to figure out what this length is, because really these are the these are the bases. Those are the bases. We gotta figure out what the height is. So, at any rate, we gotta figure out what like that would be, because that would be the height if you're looking at it, as those would be the bases. Um, some way, shape, or form, we gotta find that length, another length here. So if this is four, this would be, well, I guess this is four right here. So this is four, and this would be two. All right, find the use Pythagorean theorem. So this right here, we're gonna make do the Pythagorean theorem. We're gonna do um, two squared plus b squared equals four squared right triangle um, or at least we're making it into a right triangle um, that would be 4 equal plus b squared equals 16 b squared when you subtract 4 from both sides equals 12 b equals the square root of 12 so we'll use that then area of the base times the uh, area of the one base would be so that's 12 the area of the base um, we're going to do four or one half times four oh everything's going crazy now times that square root of 12 that would be the area of one of these triangles and multiply by the height which would be 10 all right again we're turning it I'm turning it to visualize that triangle on the bottom so we have 1 half times 4 times 10 would be 20 square roots of 12. And that can actually be factored as well. That would be the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So that would be 2 square roots of 3, which would make it 20 times that, which would be 40 square roots of 3 inches cubed. You can take your calculator and do that as well. I'm going to leave it in exact form. That's how you find the area of a prism, whether it's a regular rect rectangular prism or a triangular prism. The last bit here is volume of, not, yeah, I think I said area, I meant volume. Uh, volume of a cylinder. A cylinder has bases that are circles. All right, so let's still find the area of the base times the height. Just you find the area of the base a little bit differently. So if you do base times height, area of the base times the height, it's going to be, how do you find the area of the base? You do pi r squared times the height. So a couple examples here. Find the volume. Area of the base here um, would be pi times radius squared. So six, square, 6 squared would be 36 times pi times the height of 36. So you have 36 times pi times 36. Um, I'm going to have to use a calculator to figure out what 36 times 36 is, to do, so I don't have to take so long. Uh, 36 times 36 equals 1296 pi millimeters cubed. All right. Um, a blank is a three-dimensional figure that is a combination of two or more simpler figures. You can find the volume of a composite figure. All right, so this is, I gave it away now. A composite figure. is a three-dimensional figure that is a combination of two or more simpler figures. You can buy the volume of that composite figure by adding the volumes of the figures that are combined. So here's a, an example. And I think we're gonna cover this next time in class, but it says, what is the approximate volume of the lunchbox shown at the right? round to the nearest cubic inch. I'd like you to try to find that and prepare yourself for next time because it's actually combining two things. It's combining this lower part, which is a rectangular um, prism, and then the upper part, which is half of a cylinder. Okay, so the volume of the prism and the volume of the 
half cylinder. You can add those two together. That'll give you the volume of the whole shape. So figure out the volume of that lunchbox for next time and try to answer these three questions. That's all I want you to do is how do you find the volume of a prism or cylinder? Okay, pretty straightforward. The basic formulas for volume of prism and cylinder are the same. What's the difference? What's the one specific difference? And then what is a composite figure? All right, that's what you should have gotten out of this lesson in finding the volume of prism and volume of cylinders. Have a great day, everyone.